Former suicidal people, why did you choose to live? Serious. I've realized. I don't want to kill myself. I just don't want to be alive. I think that's what I want too. I don't want to think and relive anymore. I either want to stop existing or find some way to erase memories and start over with a blank slate. Honestly? Didn't want my mom to be sad. She's everything to me. One day I even told her that. She basically told me to go kill myself if I was really depressed I would have done it. Good thing I had friends who taught me to live for myself about 3 months before that. Cowardice. My instinct for self preservation overruled my ability to make decisions. I wrote a long explanation for my main reason but Lomfeo this is also a big fucking mood cowardice and spite. I called suicide hotline and they put me on hold. It seemed like a bad joke. And I started to laugh. That made me feel better. And I decided I could work it out and live. I got we're going to transfer you to someone else. We can't help you right now. God forbid I call on a Saturday afternoon. That's when I realized what a joke this world is. No one cares. We're all just trying to get through our own shit. I have a family whose lives I would ruin forever. And my dogs would never know why I left. The dog thing got me in the feelings. There was no good clean way to do it. I hated myself so I did not want to inconvenience anyone. I figured it would inconvenience less people if I just kept living and be as good of an addition to society as I could possibly be. So I put my energy into bettering others live and sacrifice of my own. So I go above and beyond to help people in need. I'm not afraid to tell my boss what I think. So that the lowest employee can get a bit of a boost. Even if that reduces my standing or hurts my future prospects. Ironically. My attempted self-destruction generated quite a bit of a reputation and goodwill. Even with my boss. I still have suicidal thoughts but I want to live for some years more because of my dog. My plants, my fishes. My parents and the things I like. I want to master the violin and digital drawing. That keeps me away from suicide. I share your opinions. Your pets can be a strong reason to be here. Stop taking medication that were giving suicidal thoughts. This is so important. This happened to me. Once I stopped the meds. The thoughts went away. If anyone suspects this is happening to them. Call your doctor immediately and follow their advice to the letter. Try and keep yourself safe by being around others until you feel better. I know people whose parents have committed suicide and it was really damaging to them. I have children and the thought of causing them that kind of pain. I could never do that to them. Ever. Yay. My dad killed himself at home when I was 6. My mom had become abusive and toxic because she was all alone without help. And thus. I have had many mental health problems and struggle to adapt to society. I am still trying now though. I don't like to admit that I have these problems but whenever I am wanting to just end it all. I think about the people in my life and what their reaction would be if I actually took my own life and I realize how hurt they would be so I live so I don't hurt them because no matter what I do to kill myself it will hurt them 10 times worse because they really love me. I wouldn't say I chose to live. My asshole ex-husband died and everything started getting better. The curse was lifted. It's the damnedest thing. But I no longer have suicidal thoughts. Isn't it amazing that when assholes get removed from our lives, we suddenly find the will to go on and be happy? It's like certain people are a cancer on our spirits. Family. If I leave this world like that I would break their heart and no one will take care of them. Same. I have four children. I keep holding out for joy but have only experienced disappointment. I couldn't leave them like that even if I'm not a very good mother. My family. Dad had gotten diagnosed with cancer and I realized I couldn't do that to them. I recently started seeing a therapist. I hope the therapist will help. There's much more to life than a lot of people think. Here's to hope for a great outcome. Failed repeatedly. Then found out I was pregnant. It really should have made it worse. But it made me very protective. I was determined to at least live long enough to see my daughter's face. 
If I'm honest. It was because without access to a gun or exit bag. Every other method looked too agonizing to even attempt. Not to mention what could have happened if I failed. I didn't want to be vegetative. I still have all the research I did. Scores of hours of it. Locked in my memory. My so had a gun. And after many nights of staring at it I told him. I never forced him to get rid of it. But I was lucky enough that one day my cousins visited from out of state and they bought it off of him temporarily. If he still had it. I'm not sure if I'd be alive really. Well if I would've killed myself when I wanted to I would've got the wrong guy. Over a year sober now. I'm so proud of you. I just had a year a few weeks ago too. My mother was on her deathbed with stage 3 invasive carcinoma and so I decided not to be selfish because if I were to follow through. She probably wouldn't have made it and beat it after 6 months of intense daily chemo. A bit cliche but a woman. I left home to try and find myself. Joined a trade school in Hawaii and just had a pretty subpar experience there. I haven't heard from my family in the months. Didn't make any friends. Etc. Was gonna just end it all but that week we had a batch of new students. For context I was one of few students that shows the new students the robes. I was assigned to three females. Didn't think much of it since I was gonna gone anyway so yeah. I met the newbies I was to care for and one of them just instantly caught my eye the moment I laid eyes on her. I started to look forward to the next day. And the next. And the next. We became really good friends and ended up dating. It's been over 5 years now and we're still together. I have yet to tell her that she literally saved my life. So for those contemplating. I'm all ears if you genuinely want to talk. I figured what the hell. My life can't get worse right? It didn't now I'm numb. Still has the chance to get better. If you end it. There's no chance. Your life's book ends on your shittest chapter. Lofi hip hop music. I'm serious. Whenever I have suicidal thoughts. I'd always turn on lofi music. It's just so. Calming. Reminds me of all of the good things I'd miss out if I choose to give up. As someone also into lofi hip hop. That's pretty cool. Glad you're still with us. I still have suicidal thoughts but these two stray cats randomly came near my home and I started to feed them. I didn't want to stop being their source of food so I here I am. I see your comment with no reply so I want you to know we noticed you. I have had been deep down a few years ago but it is worth to see the rest of the story. Hope you get better. Capital D. I tried seriously to commit twice. Both in stupid ways that wouldn't have worked. I would be in the middle of a panic attack. Try it. And then snap out of it. The second time I tried my mom put me in therapy. It was mostly unhelpful the therapist only really recommended religion. She did give me a couple of tools to change the pathways in my brain. And the medication certainly helped. It became tough to think about the existential stuff that would drive me to suicidal thoughts. Long story short. I'm only here because I'm stupid. So yay for being stupid. Since then I've come out to my family and been well received by everybody except my grandparents. I am engaged to the best woman in the world and happier than ever. I consider myself very lucky. And I'm glad that I was terrible at committing. I stopped believing in an afterlife and it changed how I viewed suicide. Not sure how much this counts. I'm always second guessing like maybe I wasn't really suicidal just like being stupid or something I don't know. Anyways it all seemed to be for selfish reason. A new game movie book was coming out and I wanted to experience that. I can't speak for everyone else. But I knew that if I pushed through any toxic thoughts. I would be able to get over it and live on happier than before. Life is pretty long. You can't let bullshit live rent free in your head. Colon. Close bracket. Stay strong folks. I decided that the best way to get back all the people who made me feel worthless. Alone. And hated. Was to fck all those bitches and live my best life. Ah yes. I. Too. Decided to live out of spite. If you hate me so much come and kill me yourself you fking cards. 
I was a coward and couldn't go through with it. I thought about it again when my dad told me to but I blocked it out of my mind enough to avoid thinking about it. Learning to love myself is a long and slow road but I've been taking my first steps and I feel good that this time I'll get there. Well I'm actually still struggling with suicide but one of my biggest reasons for not outwardly attempting it is how people close to me would feel. I actually recently had a dream where I did end up killing myself but I was forced to watch as the people closest to me grieved while Satan laughed at my attempts to say sorry. The worst thing about it is I'm pretty young therefore I haven't had the chance to say I chose to live. Nonetheless my reason for not attempting it yet is because of those around me. I was able to realize that my depression and suicidal ideation was directly stemming from the awful circumstances I was in. That and I set little goals for myself. I can't kill myself until I've played this video game. Double quote. I remember a particular game that I really wanted to play and looking forward to it was like a sliver of hope that I desperately needed. Ironically enough I never played that game. They remastered it a few years back and I still haven't touched it. Sometimes the goalposts would change to another game that wasn't out yet and so my runway would get a little longer. Day by day. Little by little. Edit. Fixed some spelling mistakes. I realized that I didn't want to die. I was always obsessed with death at a young age and was absolutely terrified of it. But things got harder in life and death seemed like the only option. I finally got into therapy and after ranting things out and being probed for my thoughts I realized I'm still scared of dying but I can't handle living the life I have anymore so it seems like the only option. I realized death isn't the only option and I want to live a life worth living instead of dying and missing out in a life I could have had. I still get suicidal thoughts from time to time but they're easier to deal with than before when I felt impulsive to act on it. For a long time. I didn't. I was simply forced to be alive. Being in and out of hospitals for years. Force fed. Sectioned. Things did eventually take a turn for the better though and I do now even have a reason to keep trying. I have the most loving and supportive girlfriend out there. While not all is well. Having a reason to stay alive. To try getting better. Is a huge deal. If you're ever seeing this. I love you so much. I hope we'll make it. Honestly. I just began to take life into my own hands. I started reading about self-confidence. I started going to the gym and wear things that I liked. I started opening up and being more social. And by doing that I was invited to three parties this year. Compared to a 7 year streak of zero parties and of social isolation in general. It's kinda crazy. But now I get invited to stuff and people actually want me around. Because they find me great. Sort of unbelievable still. I didn't want to leave my brother behind without making amends for our childhood. We were abused and I couldn't cope so I took it out on him. Making it doubly worse. I still want to kill myself. But I don't for two reasons. 1. Comma because someone close to me told me that me killing myself could lead them or others close to me to go down the same route that I am on. The loss of people to accidents and suicide are what have scarred me and left me the way I am. My life may seem meaningless to me but I refuse to be the cause of some home committing suicide. 2. Comma because my animals would never understand what happened. My son. He was still a baby. And though I was right at the edge. The thought of him ever thinking I didn't love him and my suicide negatively affecting him growing up was just enough to stop me and reach out for help. That thought was strong enough to make it through all of the pain and irrational thoughts and stop me. My son is the reason why I sought out a diagnosis, turned out to be bipolar 2, and have worked for years to stay on my meds as well as go to therapy when I've needed it. I mean. I do it for myself and my husband too. But making sure my son doesn't suffer due to my mental illness is my main focus. It's a bit abstract. But to put it into words as simply as possible. It's because I realized how epic it would be if I dug myself out of rock bottom and came back from the darkness. How strong I would be if I made it. And that it was worth going through anything to try. Because no pain could be worse than what I already experienced. And the alternative was only death. If I died trying. 
It wouldn't matter. So I'd give it everything I had. For some reason it made me want to buckle down and never give up. This was about 5 years ago. To this day. I feel like I can face anything. I came to a realization that. Yes we will all die at some point. The present is an experience that you only have to let. Things may be god awful. But that's part of the experience. Since then I've been doing a lot of what I want to do and doing what I can to enjoy this time I've been given. I still have the thoughts. I still have terrible depressive episodes. But I've gotten to a point where I'm able to notice what's going on and coast through them. I may not get out of bed. Or shower. Or eat for a week or so every now and then. And throughout it I still have the suicidal thoughts running. But I feel almost self aware that I'm having an episode. I can't allow my thoughts to run free. And not have an urge to act upon them. I realized that I was basing my desire to die off of the idea that nobody would miss me. So instead I decided I would try to work on my relationships with people first. And if it didn't amount to anything. I'd just kill myself. And that would be that. I can now think of a lot of people in my life that I love. Who love me back. And I realize that not only would I never want to hurt those people by killing myself. They make my life worth living as well. The failing part of not successfully going through it triggered my anxiety of all the cleanup and the emotional and social things I'd need to deal with as an aftermath and be around for and so I just told myself it's not worth the trouble. I was too afraid to kill myself. I realized I didn't really want to die after the suicide hotline hung up on me. I gave my brother the knife I had been cutting myself with and got an emergency counseling appointment. I realized there was still so much I wanted to do and hadn't done yet. I had never even been on a date. Or to a party with my friends. I said I'd live until I'd done everything I wanted to. I still can't see myself living very long. But it's kept me here so far. Because I don't know how my mother would feel. My father killed himself 3 years ago. He'd been separated for about a decade when he did so and she did not handle that well. I wouldn't do that to her. And then life just happened to introduce me to an incredible woman with whom I've been spending my past year and a half so. That makes things a lot easier as well. To take a second chance and change for the better if I put in the effort. If I don't. Then that's when I'll go bye bye. I'll miss my family and friends and dogs and they'll miss me as well since I'm the one that makes them laugh even though I feel like shti constantly and never talk about how I feel because I've been trained to not do so since I'm a guy obviously. My best friend's suicide. There were so many people at his funeral. Family. Friends. All so devastated. Including myself. I knew then I couldn't put anyone I love through that pain. My mother was a victim of suicide. That was by far the most painful part of my life hands down. I could never. Never put my loved ones through that kind of pain. Nobody should ever have to go through such a torturous process. So I suffer to keep the ones I love happy. It's a worthy sacrifice that I'm glad to make. As disgustingly cliche as it sounds. For me and because of therapy. During a really bad bout of panic attacks and just after a shitty day, my best friend came over and hugged me. She cried with me and told me that I couldn't use a permanent solution for a temporary problem. IDKY after 2 years that's what finally stuck with me. I really just focused on small things and finally climbed out of the metaphorical shithole I was in. It took a long time and it didn't happen overnight and I still have a fleeting episode where I want to just have it all end but... The happy moments deserve to have a mick not the shitty moments or the intrusive thoughts. It gets easier eventually. It happened when I stepped out into the street on purpose and a truck going about 45-50 mph was able to stop really quickly. It only had about 10-20 ft to stop. And so I figured that if that impossible stop could be made just so I could live. Then I'll stick along for the ride until I'm meant to die. The negative impact it would have on people. I wanted to not exist. But I know how badly it affects people. My suicidal ideation urge wasn't centered around needing help or affecting others. I mean I obviously needed help because of the ideation. 
but at the time I just didn't see the point of existing. Literally for me someone just texted me in the middle of when I was drunkenly slitting my wrists and asked what I was up to and I answered honestly. I don't know why I did that. I guess it wasn't really thinking. Then things happened so fast I didn't really have a say with the option to try again until a week or so later. And I just stared working on getting sober and getting my mental health back together. I genuinely don't know why I got better or why I stay sober. I just know that most of the time I don't really want to. I saw what it did to my cousin's family. She seemed happy. And then she was found by her younger sister hanging in her closet. The family moved out of the house where she committed suicide. Her parents divorced. And her younger sister has nightmares where she wakes up crying and hyperventilating 8 years later. None of her younger siblings have been able to move on they still talk about her as if she is waiting for them at home. I couldn't do that to my siblings. I have had suicidal thoughts almost for a year and a half. I remember. In 2018. I hit rock bottom and I was so tired of the way I treated myself. I just had to force myself out. I started journaling. Started setting small short term goals. Tried taking a shower every day. I also read a book called. It's kind of a funny story. And that helped me in ways I cannot explain. Just the idea that it is all going to all right. When I started believing that it is all going to be all right. It helped me a lot. I had problems w self esteem and confidence. The toughest part was making sure I did not treat myself badly. There were lots of sleepless nights and lots of rock bottoms but in the end. I was all better. I did not know the thoughts I had were suicidal. But recently. When I have started reading about the same. It makes me tear up. I am so happy that I was able to overcome it. Also. The more I think about it. I didn't want to die. I just did not want to live.